welcome. My name is Jeff Odom. I'm the Director of Sustainability and CSR at Delivery Hero. And I have the pleasure of moderating today's Hero Talk session as we explore the issue of global hunger and how Delivery Hero and the World Food Program have worked together to scale a solution that enables people to donate meals to those in need. So the format for the, for the Hero Talks, if you aren't aware, is uh, for, for today is a panel discussion. Um, and so I'm joined today by three esteemed colleagues who I've had a real pleasure and enjoyment of working with on this project. Um, so we've got Camry Amufadel joining us from Share the Meal, which is a part of the World Food Program, and then also a fellow hero, hero Daniel from Delivery Hero. So how will today's session work? So we're actually going to be going through um, around 40 minutes of looking at four different themes. So we're going to look at global hunger as an issue. Then we're going to look at the product that, that we created together to, to help address hunger. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the partnership and how we brought these two organizations together. And then finally, we're going to have a, a few minutes uh, uh, talking about the aspirations of where this could go in the future. We'll have a few minutes for Q&A at the end. So if anyone has any questions, please do submit it through um, the Q&A function. Uh, and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. Now, one more thing before we get to introductions. There was a very small piece of news today that, it, or, or earlier this week that is worth highlighting. And that is that the World Food Program was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2020. Uh, this is a remarkable achievement. I, I am very rarely at a loss for words, but I was at a loss for words when I, when I saw that. And I don't even work for a World Food Program. So Kamali Mufadel, a huge congratulations to you and all of your colleagues. Um, it's just a phenomenal achievement, so well done. Um, and uh, it just makes us, all of, all of us at Delivery Hero, even more proud to be working with, with all of you. So for introductions, actually, I think this is a good handover to Kemli. I'm going to ask you to go first. Uh, and I've got four questions I'm going to ask each of you. Um, so your title, uh, what you do. Um, so for you, Kemli, at Share the Meal, what do you do at Share the Meal? And then what role you play in the partnership? Um, and then finally, if you can tell us a little fun fact, and I think for today, what I want to ask you to answer is what food or cuisine gives you the most sentimental value? Thank you, Jeff, for the wonderful introduction um, and congratulations on the Peace Prize. We're so humbled and just shocked, uh, really, by the by the honor. So thank you uh, very much for, for saying that. Um, I'm Kamali. I work at Share the Meal. I am the Partnerships Manager at Share the Meal. I've been with the team for just over four years, um, and I have been working extremely closely with Jeff and Daniel and the entire Delivery Hero team um, working on this partnership and, and bringing it to life. So the in the nitty gritty parts, um, the exciting parts, um, and so I, I'm really uh, excited to be here today to, to talk about what we've done and, and what we plan on doing uh, with this partnership. Um, and my, my sentimental food would be Mexican food. Um, I'm from Arizona in the U.S., and I grew up uh, eating Mexican food all the time and living outside of the U.S. Um, in, in Germany for some time. It was quite difficult to find uh, good Mexican food, so um, whenever I have it, it, it just feels like home. Um, and I had it last night for dinner, actually, so I, <laughs> I still love having it. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Thank you, Kamali, uh, and, and welcome. Uh, right, Mufadel, over to you. Um, so yes, if you could tell us your, your title, what you do at Share the Meal, what you've done in the project, and your sentimental food. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so my name is Mufadel. Uh, I head up the marketing team at Share the Meal. I've been here two and a half, two and a half years nearly now. Um, my responsibility in this is very minor. I'm a minor player in this act, but really just making sure um, this project, which has taken almost every single part of our team, product, marketing, backend, uh, partnerships, obviously, making sure the prioritization happened, making sure people did what they needed to do in, in time. And, and so that's been my role, but also then coordinating the strategy for communicating, wanting to scream about this amazing work as well as falls under my role. Um, in terms of food, uh, big foodie, but really for me, the thing that kind of melts my heart is still the curry my grandma makes for me. It's uh, it's like a lamb curry, a few vegetables, potatoes, served with rice. It doesn't sound as especially special, but it's it really like brings me back to childhood. And every time I go home, I'm still, I'm lucky she's still around that she'll make it for me, and I'll kind of just eat until I fall asleep because it's just so delicious. Excellent. Well, I, so home cooking. Oh, 
Yeah, I think um, many of us can can uh, associate with that, can't we? Um, great, thank you very much, Muthadel. And, and Daniel, last but not least, if you can uh, you know, share a little bit with us about those four questions. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I am Daniel. I am project manager at Believer Hero, and I'm part of the product and tech project management office. I've been working at Believer Hero for two years, and I just realized that it's two years today, literally, so I'm really, really happy to be celebrating this way. Um, so my focus in my position is driving highly impactful cross-functional projects where the center of such projects is product and tech. And I think that this meal donations program is actually the best example. Um, so my role in the project, I am the project manager of this um, on the DH side and have an overview of all of the aspects of the project, have managed um, several project teams, several departments, and being responsible for leading the technical implementation. Um, as for food, I would say that the one that has the most sentimental value to me is arepas, which is a staple of Venezuelan food. Um, arepas, for those of you who don't know, it's basically corn flour bread that you can fill in with whatever you want, whatever you have at hand. can be cheese, can be avocado, meat, beans, doesn't matter, anything goes. Um, it, and its versatility reminds me of how diverse Venezuela is, my Caribbean roots, and just makes me feel closer to my family. That's great. Thank you, Daniel. And um, yeah, I actually don't know if I'm supposed to do the sentimental one as well, um, but I guess I will just share a little bit in, in terms of, um, so for me, it's it's American breakfast. Uh, and, and that's because I grew up having pancakes. And whenever I go home, I always eat at the same place. The day after arriving, chocolate chip pancakes covered with maple syrup, all over the bacon. So yeah, the sweet and sour American goodness. But um, so yeah, and I think this is one of the things, you know, food can connect us. Um, it's something that allows us to, to, to have, you know, have some of those common things that, um, that we can share. Right, so let's move on to the panel discussion. And what we're gonna talk about first is global hunger. Um, so today, nearly 700 million people still go to bed on an empty stomach every night. Um, and also nearly one in three people suffer from some form of malnutrition. Now, these are just two stats. I lifted them today from the World Food Program website. Um, yeah, and I think that it just highlights actually how big of a problem that is. So I think, Muthadel, I'd really like to start with you. And, uh, you know, can you, beyond these stats, kind of just pick, uh, talk to us a little bit about um, what is hunger today? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jeff. Like, hunger as a concept, it's, it's really strange for us because it's immediately relatable, but it's also completely alien. Like we've all had this feeling where we've skipped breakfast or we were stuck on a flight without any food and we felt some level of hunger, but none of us, I hope, and, and, and I really pray that none of us have experienced the kind of hunger that we're talking about when we talk about the World Food Programme's work. Um, so the worst form of hunger that we discuss and that we operate on is acute malnutrition. And that really is just a lack of calories in a diet. So we're not talking about um, the type of nutrition or even access to certain types of food. It, it's really, does the this human being have enough calories to sustain? Um, and this number is like shocking in itself. You know, we, we're talking about millions of people in the world who, who suffer on the edge of acute malnutrition. And some of the operations we're working on and even WFP is supporting right now is in Yemen, for example. You may have heard that, um, where we see, I think, something like 18 million people on the verge of acute malnutrition but that kind of just version of hunger isn't just what WFP does um, one is really around getting access for young people specifically children to get enough food in their first thousand days uh, of life so nearly three years um, to ensure that they have enough nutrients to kind of reach their developmental growth um, the risk here is that if, if children don't have this, the access to enough food in the first thousand days that it kind of goes on to stunting both in terms of the physical development but also intellectual development um, beyond that, though, there's also a kind of a really amazing part of the work we do around hunger is school meals. Um, school meals is really like the, the, the pinnacle of what we can do because it's not just allowing people to get access to food, but also really giving them a reason to come to school, right? Like, and these children otherwise would maybe have to work or would have to not be able to go to school if the meal wasn't provided. So, and for this part, really, hunger is not just on its own in terms of um, making sure people have enough food, but it's about the subsequent impact of that. So do, can a child get an education? Can a child grow properly? Can a child contribute to its family? And, and this is another form of hunger that we operate with. And then 
the kind of the more like infrastructure heavy parts of the WFP's work is really around not just how do we feed people in emergencies or with acute malnutrition, but how do we create sustainable solutions that address the wider cause of hunger? Things like climate change, again, things like conflict, which is obviously why the um, the Nobel Committee recognized the work we did last week. Um, But how do we approach these things? And, And one of the one of the funniest projects we've done really since even Camille and I've been here is um, working on hydroponics to feed goats. Um, so we're kind of like creating sustainable solutions to give goats better food. And you're like, well, how does that work? Well, because the goats produce much better, higher quality milk. And so the milk that the humans are consuming from these goats is way more nourishing. So we really, as, a, as an organization, work across the full range of hunger. Great. Thanks, Bukudo. I mean, I think one really what you've highlighted is it's, it's a really complex issue. Uh, you know, I think when we call it global hunger, we, we already have a feeling for its scale, um, but also the complexity of it. I think it's that sometimes might make it a bit challenging for people to to connect with that in, in a way. Um, so I think kind of Camley, maybe building on, on some of what Bukudo was saying, what role does the Share the Meal play at World Food Program in addressing this complex issue? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so Share the Meal is the mobile fundraising app of WFP. The, the concept of the app is for a user to, quote, share their meal with a hungry child with just a tap on the app. Um, we were started five and a half, six years ago um, at WFP, and we are on a mission to, to really make charitable giving easy. Um, you know, we understand that, you know, as the millennial generation is becoming, you know, a bigger segment of givers um, around the world. You know, gone uh, are the days of, you know, dropping a coin in a bucket outside the grocery store or writing in a check, um, you know, somewhere. But we really want to make giving back easy and simple and, and not just um, on a financial flow basis, but also on an impact basis. You know, we, we understand and, and even myself as a, as a donor, um, you know, where does your money go? What's what's happening, you know, to to your fifty five cents um, when you when you donate. So, um, you know, we're we're trying to to really take, as you said, this co- quite complex um, problem of of global hunger and and simplifying it, making it a a tangible, actionable item for for users. Um, you know, we call them users because we're an, an app, um, but but donors around the world to to really give back and and try to to make a difference. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, a great way of summarizing that it, it is taking that complex issue and, and, and making it simple to engage with. Um, and, you know, I, I think as someone who was introduced to, to the Share the Meal lab by, by, by you and the team, um, it was so interesting to see that, uh, you know, actually you're able to suddenly just allow someone to very simply play a part in this really, really big and complex issue. And, and I think that was you know, a huge value add from, from sharing meals. So it was great to great to see that. Um, and and I guess Daniel, what what made Delivery Hero want to join this cause? Yeah, that is a great question, Jeff. Um, I would say that there are many there are mainly two elements that I would like to highlight um, to better understand why Delivery Hero joined this cause. So firstly, I would say is the nature of Delivery Hero as a business. So on a regular basis, we use our technology to provide food, and that's at the core of our business. So we've been doing this for more than nine years, on an international scale, we are growing very quickly, more than 40 countries. Um, so I think this is the first point. And secondly, I would say it's related to our values. So one of Delivery Heroes' main values is we are heroes because we care. Um, and at Delivery Hero, I think we are very proud of, of our giving back program. So that consists of many additional initiatives. For example, we have currently running what we call Hero Month, which is the flagship initiative um, to enable employees to volunteer to different causes. And none of this is to give back to our communities. So I would say those uh, main elements were the main ingredients that motivate us to play a role in reducing hunger. However, um, even though Delivery Hero is a global, has a global presence, and the business is growing very, very fast, the private sector itself cannot fight hunger alone. Um, we need to work together with other experts in order to succeed. I personally think that the private sector has a key role to play here to achieve the sustainable um, development goals and the Agenda 2030 in general. Um, I personally like um, SDG 17, which is Partnership for the Goals, um, because I think we 
have to bring people together and we have to bring people from many sectors to achieve zero hunger. So, and at this point, when we were starting with this project and having initial conversations with Share the Meal and the World Food Program, we learned about their massive um, operations, their enormous expertise on this field, and we also wanted to be part and contribute to their mission. So from this moment onward, I think we, we all realized this is a win-win opportunity for everyone by leveraging World Food Program's operations, combined with this innovative approach of Share the Meal, like Camille was mentioning uh, about what this great app is doing. Um, and if you combine that with um, our audience, our broad audience, and our in-house technology, and you think um, we can create a highly innovative product that connects customers with causes they care about. And at the same time, I think we're offering a unique opportunity to make a real scalable contribution towards reducing hunger. Thanks, Daniel. I mean, I think, you know, you, you've summed up really well. I think we are a company that uh, is, is driven by our values, and but also really looking at how we can um, how we can play a role that aligns really well with, with our business. Um, you know, so we are we are there trying to to connect people with food, and and, and this was a, an interesting fun way of being able to, um, to to connect people to to support this big big cause. Um, so. In terms of, so Kamley, I wasn't sure if to move it out, Kamley, anything you wanted to follow up with Daniel on that before we move on to the next? Yeah, I can add, I mean, you just briefly touched upon it, Jeff, is that, you know, I think this is really a, an amazing partnership because it's, we're targeting or, or inviting like-minded people to, to engage with the World Food Program. So, you know, when you're ordering food on an app, you're thinking about food, you're thinking about, oh, I'm hungry, but as Mufadal mentioned earlier, you know, we most likely don't have that concept of what real hunger is. And so I think um, using Delivery Hero as a platform to, to advocate for what hunger is, how you can help, is, is really, as we see from Shared Meal and WFP, the, the ideal connection of, you know, the, the audience of, of really sending, uh, you know, driving that message home um, of, you know, how to help in this global challenge. Great, yeah, and I think that's um, that's part of the value add that we that we wanted to bring as as a company was looking at you know companies can can give more than than just their own money. They can give their capabilities. They can contribute through their technology. Um, you know, I think, and that's one of the things that, that we um, were were able to bring was was connecting to consumers. Um, and I know that when when I often think about UN agencies, you think of governments. Um, and I think that was the brilliance of Share the Meals. It, it allowed people to engage with a, a UN agency as an individual. Um, you know, and I think if, if we're able to, to help more individuals connect to you to support your causes, I think that's, uh, that's the win. Any, any other comments before we move on to, to the next? No. Cool. All right. So um, what we're really going to, so what we've learned about is, is you know, this big global issue. You've heard a little bit about um, how Delivery Heroes kind of wants to, to play a role in supporting um, Share the Meal and the World Food Program. So let's dive in and, and hear a little bit more about actually what, what did we do together. Um, and so in that sense, Daniel, I'm going to come back to you actually um, and just ask what, what actually has been developed? Like how does it work on Delivery Hero platforms? Yeah, sure. So, well, at Delivery Hero, we're always at the front of innovation. And I think it's, it's no surprise that we use our technology to also contribute to the zero hunger goal. Um, so what we did specifically was to develop a meal donation functionality within Delivery Hero platforms to enable customers make a micro donation, which is a very, very small amount of money that they are donating as part of their ordering process. So, the main idea that we had when we were planning, when we designing this feature, was to make it as seamless as possible and with a focus on providing a great customer experience, which I think is also the same principle that is covering delivery hero apps in general, but also the share the meal app itself. And it's something very seamless, very intuitive. So we wanted to also use the same principle. So in terms of, of the user flow, so it might change a little bit depending on what brand of delivery hero you are talking about, but a very common approach that we took here um, is to place a donation button on the same screen the user sees when the order has been placed and you can see the different um, statuses of your order. So 
once you're seeing the order status and you see this donation button, you can interact with it. So this donation button is actually integrated with the Show the New app, which allows a really nice functionality. So once the user selects this donation button, we open what we call this donation screen. On this donation screen, you're able to see different aspects, different elements. First thing you will see is a really, really nice image um, of someone that could potentially be a beneficiary of these donations. And we wanted to try to keep it very, very positive. So because in general, our customers, the main thing that is probably not thinking about is making a donation in a, in a food delivery app, but we want to make this an opportunity for everyone to do so. Um, so here, after you see this nice image, we also have a description of what the beneficiary campaign is going to look like, because we believe it's very important that the customer is informed, that the customer can make an informed decision and have a very well idea of where the money is going specifically. So we're going to offer on the same screen three default donation options where the user can choose from and it's possible to donate one meal, three meals, or seven meals. So what I personally like the most about um, this feature is that we are actually able to tailor it to a different market. So for example, if you have someone making a donation in Bulgaria, what this person is going to see is not exactly the same that someone, let's say, in Malaysia is seeing. Because we're trying to have a customized experience as much as possible. So once the user selects one of these donation options, we process the payment. And once the payment has been confirmed, we redirect the user back to the same page where you can see the status of your order. So in just a few taps, users can make a real uh, live donation. And since we are integrated with the Share the New app, they can also see all these donations coming through at the same time, which I personally think is a really, really nice thing to see. And I mean, I think that's the perfect description, Daniel, of the process. Um, you know, we we built our API um, with this exact intention in mind. <laughs> I mean, it's really incredible how I think you and the team really read our mind <laughs> in terms of, you know, what we envisioned our API to do, um, both with the product and, and the brand and the advocacy, as, as Jeff mentioned earlier. Um, but exactly this is what it's there for, is for really to provide content to provide um, messaging on impact, you know, where where is your shared meal going? Who is it helping? Um, like you said, from photos of the beneficiaries or the people we help to specific content information to even the price point, um, you know, where we built this this um, API as a, an, we call it an a la carte menu, <laughs> really, on, you know, what you can pick and choose. And as you said, um, you know, some of the, the brands might be a bit different depending on the audiences. You know, different different audiences around the world uh, respond differently to different to, to different content. And so, you know, we're also here to help bring our expertise in. You know, what what is fundraising like in Bulgaria in comparison to Japan? You know, how can we bring our expertise and, and experience to the table on? You know, what what is the the correct uh, you know benchmarks to use and what type of content? What what type of operations should we be supporting? Um, and so those are, are bits and pieces to the puzzle that, that we brought on our side. And I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's really, and I can't say this enough, it's, it's really incredible to, to see it come together, you know, and, and really, um, you know, work a lot of technical work on, on both ends. Um, but to see the end product and, and being launched out market by market, I think it's, it's really awesome to see, um, you know, the, the products uh, working smoothly as it is so far. Yeah, I mean, I think that was that was my experience as well, Camille. Like the first time you see your donation go through, and you're kind of like, "Oh, that's that that is so amazing!" That feeling of having put so much effort into something, and then you see it you see it work. And you know, I think it's that that positive experience is as what Daniel was saying is what we want to create for the customer experience. Is you know, the last thing we would want to do is 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 highlight kind of a guilt factor. It's it's wanting to say, "Hey, you know, you might not have thought of." doing a donation, but, but here's the option and, you know, make it seamless, make it easy, um, help them feel like they're, feel like they're contributing. Um, so, so Mirfidel, I think would be, you know, maybe if you can give us some background around, you know, how did this feature come about? Like, and how did the work come about in terms of you know, an idea to the reality of now someone in Bulgaria can uh, donate a meal through, through our app? 
Yeah, so I think the the kind of the idea behind the partnership and the API, it's it's a, just an extension of the idea behind share the meal. So the the value proposition of share the meal really is like all that originated share the meal was why is it so hard to do something good on your smartphone? Like genuinely, like it, we can order taxis in a blink of an eye. We can order great food. We can learn how to take up a new hobby or meet your future husband on Tinder. <laughs> but actually the the tech for good marketplace five years ago was really, really nascent, even now. And this isn't a criticism of our competitors or it's just still not there. And I truly believe that if people were able to do good in an easy, simple, trustworthy way, they would in all facets of humanity. Like if you're waiting, if you're in line at the Reve and you see a donation box, you probably give a little bit of change, but it's like what we want to do is to make that digital, but also have make sure there's an impact at scale. And, that, and that's really what Share the Meal as an app allows people to do, which is to do a seamless donation experience and then do it in a way that's trustworthy and has the backing of the UN and, and make a massively effective impact on society. And the natural extension to that is, to, okay, well then we have a 3.5 million downloads cam, correct me if I'm wrong, but like that's peanuts compared to delivery <laughs> uh, products globally. It's like, how can we get harness an audience that is just as motivated just as like-minded in a way that is just as easy and so the origin of this idea of the api definitely precedes my time at share the meal we've, we've been emailing different brands even delivery her four years ago and it, it, it's taken a little bit of time because it, it's complex it hasn't been a simple process from either side but really the the thinking behind is okay we have an audience who want to do good who, but it, they want to do it in a way that is, they're used to, which is straightforward, easy, but also trustworthy. And, and that's really where the partnership came about. Cool. I mean, and, and I guess, can we maybe, uh, you know, Rufi, I'll touch on, on a couple of things, like in terms of, of, of when the donation's going through. And I think um, he also touched on the fact that, uh, you know, one of the things from at least from my perspective, when you work with a UN agency, is it, it creates like an organization that you know, there's a lot of scrutiny that goes on it. Um, and, and that also, in, at least in, in my mind, also creates an element of, of trust because you know that scrutiny is kind of driving for, for better transparency. So I think kind of one of the things that links to that is, well, some people might ask, well, what happens actually to the money that I donate? So maybe if you can just expand a little bit, well, when someone clicks that donation button, where does that money go? What happens to it afterwards with that? Yeah, I think um, that question is so important to us, you know, both within our donations within Share the Meal and then our partnerships. I mean, we, as Share the Meal, as WFP, strive to be as transparent as possible. Um, and so when that money touches our WFP bank accounts, essentially, um, that money is then allocated to the appropriate region and then operation. Um, WFP operates in, and again, with little, I, I know these numbers are changing. So I think it's almost 90 countries around the world now. Um, we're adding more and more uh, every year. Dozens of operations, as, as Mufadal mentioned earlier, no, earlier, from school feeding to emergency operations to resilience programming. Um, and we worked very closely with with your your team um, on what operations make most sense for your audience. You know, do what operations speak to um, a, a donor in Philippines or a donor in um, uh, Bulgaria, you know, how can we make that connection? Um, because sometimes, you know, it's it's really hard to envision what what hunger is like for someone in a completely other part of the different part of the world than you are. And so we spent a lot of time, um, you know, working on what type of programs WFP operates in. Where do we operate in parallel? Um, where does Delivery Hero operate, and where does WFP operate? And if that's the case try to make make sure that that's where we're, you know, keeping the, the funds because, you know, I think donors are, are much more apt to give if it's helping their backyard versus somewhere that they, they might not know where it is on a map. <laughs> um, so we, we really try to be um, diligent in, in selecting those locations and then, you know, kind of not to get in the weeds of the operational side of, of WFP and the, and the financial flow, but um, we have team members who, who work at WFP on ensuring that, you know, those funds are, are reaching the people in need. Um, and so those, uh, you know, $55 cents that you're donating um, through through the Delivery Hero API, um, you know, we, we about 90% um, will be going 
to, to the field, as we say, or to that specific operation. So, um, you know, we're, that's on us to make sure that those funds get there. And, and that's what we do best. You know, we're, we're feeding more and more people every year um, and, and in more places. And so, um, you know, this is, this, is, this is why we're here, right? Um, and so that's what we, we can bring to the table um, on that side of things. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it's great to hear and I'm glad you pulled out kind of um, the, the portion of the donation that goes to the field, because I know that was also a big part of a lot of the work that, that uh, you know, we were doing on our side, too. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know, Daniel, if you would maybe just want to give a little bit, a bit of detail around actually the, the effort that we went to in speaking with partners to try to make sure that as much of the donation was going to um, to the World Food Program, you know, we don't take any cut, anything like that. And I know that, you know, we looked at things like FX exchange rates and, and various fees are charged and tried to negotiate out of that. But maybe you can expand a little bit on that as well. Yeah, indeed. Um, that has been a challenge, I must say, because it's all that background part behind this donation feature is what actually makes it so complex. Um, and yeah, we have to navigate through many regulations, tax implications, and need with something that, as I said before, it's something that we are, cannot do together as a private company, but we need to find partners. We need to find partners in the private sector. We need to find partners on the, on the NGO side. So to make this happen, because it's the complexity of this is such a large thing that the more hands we have on it, the better. Cool. And I mean, I think this is where uh, you know, just to sum up on all this, you know, we've got this this aperture that Neil had had created that simplified, uh, you know, the, the big complex kind of challenge of, of hunger and brought it down to where an individual could contribute. And I think what what we've tried to do together, and, and we're seeing this now launched in in Bulgaria and Romania and, and and soon many other countries, is is then trying to just present Delivery Hero customers with the option to donate. You know, and I think we've been uh, walking, being very careful to walk that that line of, you know, this isn't an, an, a way of being able to attract customers, but it's a way of just giving customers the choice that they can that they can um, make a donation much the same as, as I think a, a few of you have mentioned around, you know, dropping a few coins um, in in a donation pod at, at Revel, um, and and I think but you know, we were only really able to, uh, you know, create this product because we were able to bring these organizations together. Uh, and, and I know that for, for those who have worked in partnerships, this is uh, sometimes um, quite a quite a complex and, and tricky thing. Um, you know, I think kind of Daniel Canley, I think I'd love to get your thoughts around you know, actually how, how did we bring together these two very different organizations? Yeah, I think that's that's a that's a very great question as well. Um, I think the first thing I would say is that there are so many compatibilities between WFP and the age in many, in many different levels. Um, but especially, I would say we are similar when it comes to values and mission. So we are very large organizations, especially what we program now can be mentioned working in more than 90 countries. Um, I think we are working on a global scale, both of us. We are very, very ambitious and we want to make sure that we provide the best possible service to our audience. So I think that's something that we have in common. Um, I think something that helped as well with partnership in general is building this relationship over time and maintaining it, I think has been key. And, and we've been working very, very closely with World Food Program on a daily basis, work with uh, Kamali, with Fado and so many other people. And I think having open conversations, open discussions has been also very, very helpful. Um, if I could add to that, I would say that we've had constant support from management from both of our organizations. I would say leadership has been always very committed as well to make this happen. And not only in the highest level, but I would say within the biggest product community for, for a delivery hero, I think we've also received a lot of support and I'm pretty sure in the share the meal side is the same. So we are equally excited about this. Um, I would say something that, that is tricky when, when working with partners in general, and especially at this size, is uh, that we always need to manage our expectations because we all were super excited from the beginning until now we're even more excited um but we wanted we have a clear idea of where we wanted to go but some things take time right so sometimes we cannot just go as fast as we would like to um anything again having open communication constant communication 
it's the best way to manage your expectations. And last thing but not least, since the good things take time, um, I would say that patience is something that, that we've all learned about this. Because again, we want to go very fast somewhere, but sometimes we just don't need to go too fast, but just to go to the right place to make sure that everything is right, that all these complex topics are resolved. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Kamali will agree on some of these points. A million percent, Daniel. Um, yes, I mean, I think it's really been the dream team to, to work in. And I'm not just saying that because we're sitting on a panel here. Um, it really has been incredible to work with you all. And as you said, on a daily basis um, for the past year plus, <laughs> really, really on this. And um, I think we've been organized. I think we've been really great at communicating. I think um, we've been honest, as you said, and transparent of what's working, what's not working, you know, and, and how can we brainstorm or work around, you know, if, if something um, needs to be sorted. And I think your, your point on leadership um, is a great one that, you know, on both sides of the table, you know, both when uh, WFP, Shared Meal and Delivery Hero, um, all teams have been so supportive uh, of this, which has really just helped us um, in this new project. I mean, it's a the first kind of partnership there is out there as far as I know. Um, and, you know, if, if it uh, was easy, it would have been done already, right? And I think that's kind of the motto that we've been using uh, throughout this. And, and I think it's, um, yeah, just, just incredible to see the, the challenges we've overcome and, and also have used those as um, learnings and, and best practices on, on how to take that to the next step. Um, you know, if we're having a bit of a challenge in, in one region or on one specific product feature, how can we learn from that? and take it to the next, um, because there's so many different facets of this partnership. Um, I could talk about it forever, and I'm sure you could too, Daniel, um, but but I think um, just being so, so having synergy and, and working so well together um, has really been the the best part of this. Um, so we're we're just at the beginning, and so I think we're, we're just thrilled to see and excited, um, you know, what, what's next to come. Yeah, so I, both, Daniel and Camille, thank you so much because you, you both said things that they're coming up like in my memory over the past kind of uh, year and, and they just really speak so true. Um, you know, and I think uh, it, Camille, you said kind of if it was if it was easy, someone would have done it already. I, I mean, Daniel probably has lost count. I, you know, I've lost count the number of times we've actually said that in, in, in meetings, whether or not it's with each other, whether or not it's with um, our, our colleagues um, in, in tech and product. Um, you know, yeah, because it, it's it's a complex piece, a very simple feature, but a complex piece sitting sitting underneath it. Um, and and I think kind of Daniel, your point around, um, you know, if, if we had a clear idea of of what, of what we wanted to do, and I think that was a really helpful feature for bringing these um, the two organizations together. We we both knew what we wanted to achieve, but we didn't actually know exactly how we would get there. Um, and I think that's also not just the sign of, of, uh, of a good partnership and an alignment, but it, it was the fact that we were willing to take that leap together um, and we were willing to figure out how we were going to do that um, and, and kind of crafting and, and uh, the, the partnership around that. I think, you know, that was, um, I think, something that, it, to, to your point, Cam, was, it was a quite a good testament of leadership um, in that the business, both, both our business and, and WFP were willing to make that leap and they were willing to do it together with an organization that we hadn't worked with before. Um, so again, it just, just shows that. Um, Mufida, I think I, what I'd really like to, to get a feeling from you on is, you know, what, what we've heard a, a, a little bit ourselves, like in conversations with, with Sharon the Meal um, previously, is it's a little bit of a different partnership from um, from what kind of work the firm has done before. I'd just be interested in, you know, how does it differ from maybe say some of the other relationships that World Food Program has? Yeah, definitely. Um, broadly speaking, WFP has kind of two kinds of partnerships that um, corporates can engage with. Uh, and so one is around fundraising and the other is more around um, operational or technical expertise. Um, I'm also aware that there's a, a member of, from the partnerships team on this panel. So if she wants to correct me, feel free to uh, to interject. Um, and so let's, let's just break this down. Fundraising is kind of self-explanatory, right? We have, we're very lucky to have corporate partners who are able to sign a check and, and give us some money. And that's good, but it, it's not necessarily reliable because it's a commitment for a certain amount of time. But, but it may as well just end at a check. And then there's technical partnerships, which are helping us with a specific problem. So it could be... Uh, 
a company helping us arrange the logistics for our truck fleet. How can we make that more efficient? And you, when you scale that up at the amount of people we're helping and the amount of grain we deliver, it can make a huge impact. For me, mm. this partnership is unique, and it, I think it really is unique, because it straddles both. We have spent a long time working around a technical solution for a fundraising problem, which is how do we make a system that is so simple to users but incredibly complicated beneath the surface that it then allows users to in a very easy way to donate funds. And, and so for me, this partnership and across the organization, there's a lot of attention on it because it is really unique in that way where we've engaged a corporate to, at the end of the day, generate funds, but through a technical avenue. Yeah, and I mean, I guess this goes back to, you know, to, this, to, the, to the problem at hand. You know, global hunger is, is, a, is a complex problem, as we've heard, and, and, and you know, funds are needed for being able to address that, whether or not it's um, the logistics or whether or not it is, uh, you know, simply uh, purchasing the grain that, um, uh, that needs to be provided. And, you know, I, I can see kind of being able to, um, to, to allow individuals to be able to, to contribute to that is, um, is, is, a, is a new source, I guess, for, for UN agencies. So I think we're, we're delighted that we can play our part in that. Um, Daniel, I think we just have um, a, a kind of a follow up to you, I think, on, on the partnership side is, you know, there were there were a lot of other departments as well as even organizations that were that were involved in this work kind of behind the scenes. Now, when we think about partnership, you know, yeah, OK, there was delivery here on the local program. How do we bring some of those other parts together? Because it's ultimately like a, a, a bigger puzzle with more pieces than just than just the two organizations. Yeah, it's totally right. I mean, it is a big puzzle. Um, and there are so many people behind this. I mean, it's not only, as you said, not only WFP, DH, it's, it's way more people. So, for example, we have our payment service providers who have been also very supportive of this initiative. They're actually the ones allowing to process these donations on the technical point of view. Um, we've been working very, very closely with international NGOs and nonprofits with external experts to make sure that we can design a donation process that is compliant. All these financial workflows that are behind this donation button, it's, it's actually very complex. So we've had a lot of help to make this in a compliant way and it's also able to scale. Um, I'm pretty sure internally at WFP and both also the, at the age, we've had in-house experts who always giving us a hand on this. We have our teams from finance, legal, product, analytics, CSR, marketing, communication, so many teams that have been involved in this. Um, but I would say what is key here is, is going back to my previous point of having clearly defined objectives. So that's one of the things that helped us to bring everyone together. Because even though we didn't know exactly what way to go, because at the end of the day, there are many ways of doing something. Um, we always knew where we wanted to go, exactly what we wanted to achieve. So. I would say having clearly defined objectives, um, having again, open, honest communication with everyone in the teams, um, and also understanding that um, sometimes things don't go in the way we want and we should always be able to learn about that. We should have a conversation about it. We should always have feedback. So I think that's um, part of our culture, I would say, as a company. Um, and we're using that uh, to leverage um, all this partnership and bringing all these things together. Uh, one last thing that I would say is that constant collaboration, I think, is our daily menu here. Um, as I said, there are so many topics of this project that cannot possibly be covered by one person of one team, but we always need to find synergies. We need to work closely with our experts. So I think if you put all of these things together, all these things, you can you can bring up everyone here. One of the really fun things about this is that this partnership is still is we're still in our opening act, you know. And so I think I'd like to spend a few minutes just looking at actually where where could this go. So Nufidel, what what does this feature mean for Share the Meal or for the World Food Program? I think the first thing it means is just a huge amount of validation. <laughs> I don't really want to underestimate the resources and time that has gone into supporting the API, working through this. So first, and you know, although we behave like a startup in Berlin, we are part of this huge organization. And so to be able to say, we took this gamble, you know, and it has been a gamble because we're doing something unique. It means the next gamble we take, 
we'll be much more likely to be able to push forward and maybe hopefully at a slightly more aggressive pace. So I think this validation. The second thing is simply the massive impact of the funds that we'll raise. Um, and it's, you know, there's this famous quote, which is like one death is a tragedy and a million is statistic. But I find the opposite to also be true when we talk about feeding people. Like feeding one person is, is you know, a massive, amazing privilege. But when you talk about feeding a million people, people, we can't cope with, with that. You know, nobody can conceptualize that. And so um, everybody on this call, I really want us to think about like, what is the biggest group of people you've seen in a single space? Obviously for the last nine months, probably like five. But, you know, if you've been to a football stadium or if you've been on Rio Beach, you may be seeing like a million people at one time. Imagine enabling all those people who have you know just like us have aspirations and hopes and possibility to, to be fed for the day and so first and foremost this means the ability to feed people who are in desperate need of that the second thing is it really gives us the impetus to grow on more channels and so we've long talked about why don't we have an apple watch integration why can't why can't i say you know siri donate a meal and for us really to find other ways and other channels of diversifying our technology and then also augmenting the api for then delivery here to use like um we've also long talked about video content in the thank you screen how could we implement a real peer-to-peer -peer relationship with the good we're doing right now we have these amazing thank you pictures of our beneficiaries which is the, the term we use for the people we help um, but imagine a video, imagine extra content there. So for, for us, as you said, Jeff, like this is the, the opening act of a really like amazing complex partnership and it, like it's, it's a real privilege to work on it. Daniel, what about, what about Delivery Hero? Where do you see the future going for, for us? Yeah, I would say that's also a very, very good question. Um, so at the moment we are focusing on launching what we call the first version of this feature to some of our markets. We first want to see how it works how our customers are interacting with it. So in the long run, we can also adapt this um, functionality to match their best interests and their individual needs that all of our different markets have. Um, I would say maybe in the long term, um, we'll be is working on offering this product to as many countries as we can, uh, because we want to scale it up. We want to offer customers the opportunity of connecting with a cause that they care about. And they think by doing so, they are also contributing to fight hunger globally. Um, I think it's not a secret um, in the product tech community that products change all the time. So it's, it's part of our nature. Um, so of course, Delivery Hero, this functionality is not the exception. Um, so we are planning to also to iterate on this feature. We wanna make it in the long term even more seamless, more scalable, and more tailored to the needs of our, of our customers. And I think this is, uh, you know, oftentimes in, in the opening act, you know, well, with, with a, I guess with a play, you know where you're going. I think with us, we might have an idea, but just as we took a leap of faith at the beginning, you know, I think it's, we, we might have ideas about where this can go. I, I think what I'm going to be really interested in, in say two or three years is, is looking back at actually how far we've come and how the features developed. Um, so I think it's a, uh, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see um, where, where this where this goes next. Um, so what I want to do is, is actually move us over to starting to ask some of the questions. So thank you very much for um, for those who are listening who've who've sent in some questions. Um, and so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at through some of the notes and um, and maybe start with a question for you, uh, Mufidel. Was um, what are some of the disaster areas that that share the meals supporting as part of its donation work right now. So, you know, maybe putting in the context of, of this project is, you know, where would some of the, uh, the donations actually get to in, in the end? We always have uh, multiple appeals in the app at any one time. And so if you install the Share the Meal app and um, looked at it, you get a customized um, menu of different appeals. So right now I think we have Yemen, we have the Congo, we also have uh, an emergency campaign, but the appeals we're using for the Delivery Hero um, integration is more specific based on regions. Um, Daniel, feel free to correct me. Like I think we have one right now for the uh, Romanian and Bulgaria markets, um, and then we also have one um, for Malaysia, which maybe has been online a couple of days, um, which is more of an APAC focus. And so the funds are at the moment funneled regionally. Um, so these are slightly different to kind of the emergency style campaigns that you'd see in the app if you opened it up right now, for example, and saw Yemen. Great. Yeah. And I mean, actually, um, I just say a little thing about where we'd love to see the feature go next is kind of going back to that previous conversation is, 
um, you know, if there was a, a natural disaster and we were able to, you know, very quickly say within, within 24 hours kind of change the campaign so that customers are able to, you know, to contribute towards that. I think that's you know, one of the areas I know that we've talked about and it'd be um, really exciting to, to see that happen um, just because I think, Again, uh, that's one of the, the, the great things to see the World Food Program is able to do is mobilize very quickly. And I think it's looking at actually how can we do such a fast mobilization on, um, on the tech side to be able to match that. A great example was just um, recently with the Beirut, um, mm -hmm. with Beirut Blast. Uh, we, like, you know, we spoke with our colleagues on the ground almost immediately and Share the Meal was able to launch a fundraising campaign in less than 48 hours. And I think within seven days, we'd raised something like $500,000. And that's just through the app. But imagine if we could then extend that to Delivery Heritage um, apps and, and we were able to really focus that. So, yeah, obviously emergencies, no one ever wants them to happen, but they, they do happen. And so um, reacting to those, is, it would be amazing. Um, great. So the, th thank you um, for that, Mividel. The, the next question, and there's also congratulations um, for, for uh, Camille and Mividel for, from this person. So big congratulations on delivering um, such as tangible impact for communities in need and winning the Nobel Peace Prize. So again, well done, World Food Program. Um, so Kamali, what what were your personal lessons that you learned from this project and, and how will you continue to measure that success moving forward? Yeah, I, thank you for the question. Um, I think Daniel said it earlier is perseverance, you know, and, and not giving up and, and really we we had quite quite a few interesting challenges, one that ones that we didn't foresee whatsoever um, that came up when, when developing this. And I think, um, again, on a very personal level, um, to to keep on keeping on, <laughs> you know, and to, to ask for help when needed um, and, and to not be afraid to say, OK, this isn't working. Let's try another solution. Um, I think uh, on both sides uh, of the teams, we, we've done really well with with doing that and um, maybe have learned that at the same time. <laughs> um, and, and I think that, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely use that continuously in this partnership, but, you know, personally and professionally, if, if you want to say, um, you know, to, to be able to, to, yeah, measure how things are going um, in this partnership and beyond. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, and the next question is looking at um, COVID, actually. And, and uh, Daniel, I think it'd be great to get your, your input on this is, um, how has how's COVID impacted the project or, or has it? Yeah, I can definitely say that COVID has probably impacted every single aspect of our lives. Um, and of course, this project is, is not the exception. Um, on the Delivery Hero side, we have to be very reactive to this pandemic. So we have to make sure our writers, our customers, our restaurants, everyone's safe, which is the most important priority during this pandemic. And of course, we also need to be very reactive on the product side. So we mobilize our teams to, for example, create a contactless delivery feature uh, to make sure that riders and customers are protected. So the attention on the product side, of course, we had to move a little bit um, to this urgent necessity that we had. Um, but I think at the end, it was just a matter of, yes, probably we took a little bit longer, but I mean, in this kind of um, pandemic. I mean, it's very, very difficult to predict this kind of thing. So I think very being very reactive to this. Um, but yeah, at the end, of course, I don't think there's any single aspect of our lives that hasn't been impacted by the pandemic. Move it out, Kamali. I mean, any any thoughts on your side in terms of did, did COVID impact um, either this project or or things for Share the Meal and, and World Food more broadly? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I don't think it uh, impacted this project specifically in that sense of slowing it down necessarily i mean as daniel said it's impacted our entire lives you know we're we're not even in person right right now <laughs> you know we're we're doing this uh over zoom so um i think that's uh, an aspect of it but i think in terms of the operation side you know wfp has been the busiest we've been maybe ever <laughs> you know i mean there there's been a massive call for for help and fundraising to to really meet those needs um because COVID is a million percent, unfortunately, impacting um, the beneficiaries, those people we help and, and um, you know, have been and, and will be um, for, for, the foreseeable, for the foreseeable future. Um, we, we had emergency operations in the Share the Meal app, um, you know, to launch, uh, you know, as soon as we could. We still have the opportunity to, to share um, in Share the Meal for COVID operations. Um, but, you know, that's just something um, that, 
you know, who, who knows how long, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll be in this uh, situation for. So, but Daniel, any other thoughts on, um, you know, how COVID, I know it's been, um, as you said, very different for your business, um, you know, in terms of the product side, but I think also communications. Um, any insights on that as well? Yeah, I think uh, one of our major challenges was to react quickly. So as we know, we have a lot of different markets. We have a lot of different teams and it's not only product, it's communications, it's a restaurant. So we have to do a massive communication on this to make sure that we have standards in place and most importantly, that everyone's safe. Yeah, and I think Jeff mentioned earlier, um, Share the Meal has worked really hard on trying to be as reactive as possible to these emergencies, be it... Beirut, be it uh, COVID, but I think, um, you know, some, I think a few people have asked, what's the next step in this partnership? I think that's an incredible idea and and option that we've kind of discussed in the past of, you know, phase two, phase three, et cetera, um, to to be able within 24, 48 hours to allow, um, you know, your community to help in those emergency operations because WFP you know, we're the first on the ground. This is this is what we excel at. This is what, um, you know, our, our history is. A lot of times I think people think that, you know, WFP is there to, to hand out um, porridge in, in a soup kitchen line or something. But that that is very far from reality of what we actually do. I mean, we're, we're a logistics organization. We're there to be, you know, from technology to food to um, building roads. I mean, we, we're really all hands on deck um, in this type of work. Um, so, you know, we, we hope, of course, another um, pandemic or natural disaster doesn't occur, but um, we're ready, I guess, when it does. <laughs> we're actually coming up on the hour, so I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna close it here. I would just like to give a very big thanks to our panelists. So, um, Daniel, thank you for bringing um, the delivery hero input. Um, Camille Mufidel, thank you so much for all the insights, as well as a big thank you for being such great partners to work with. And I will say it again, because you can never say it so much when you win the Nobel Peace Prize. Congratulations. Um, and again, thank you for, for all of um, our, our listeners who, who joined us for today. Um, I hope you found this um, enlightening and informative. If you are, are living in any of the markets where this future lies, um, check it out. You know, it's, it's there as an option. Um, and also, I'd just like to, to share that we are Uh, recording a podcast for our Hero Voice uh, podcast series. Um, And this is also going to be talking about um, the feature, and that's going to be available in November. Uh, And then also, if you want to read a little bit about this, um, check out the corporate blog on Delivery Hero's website at www.deliveryhero.com. And there's some information about uh, the partnership and the project there. But right now, thank you very much for joining us. Have a lovely evening um, and a safe evening in this COVID pandemic. Um, And again, thank you very much to the panelists. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.